better than fear. That seems to be the takeaway from those bank earnings today. J.P. Morgan seeing its biggest post earnings pop in some 20 years. Let's bring in the star analyst now, Mike Mayo, Wells Fargo Securities. More details on the move he made. You have said, nice to see you. Goliath is winning. And oh, boy, did we get evidence of that today, did we not? Goliath is really, really, really winning. And you see that with the largest U.S. bank, J.P. Morgan, beat expectations by almost one-fourth. The big news here is that they guided higher $7 billion of revenues with zero extra expenses. They got it higher. Last year, they had $50 billion of pre-tax earnings, another $7 billion. You're talking like 12 or 13% higher earnings, just like that. And so we increased our estimate this year by 12%. Wow. You raised your price target on the stock as well. Absolutely. So what number? Where are we now? So we have like over 25%, 30% upside from here, even with the stock moving higher. So we'd still be buying the stock, even with the, the higher news. Now, look, the big news here is that national banking is paying off. This is why you had national banking passed in 1994, because J.P. Morgan has diversification of funding by channels, by geographies, by by customer. And that diversification is really paying off. And so they don't have the issues of some small regional bank. Also, and Scott, I've been on your show before. By the way, I was on the show before the earnings saying J.P. Morgan, but um, people are cherry picking. Don't pat yourself on the back too hard. <laughs> no, I've made my share of mistakes. Don't worry. But uh, the cherry picking of, oh, funding costs are going higher. They went higher for J.P. Morgan, but guess what? Their yields on their assets went even higher than that. Mm -hmm. And the other point, as you know, um, I downgraded J.P. Morgan at the start of last year because I thought their expenses were out of control. Now, Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan, they're getting this $7 billion of extra earnings without spending more expenses. So now they have the financial discipline that we've always loved about Jamie Dimon for the last 25 years. It's coming back and it's coming back in spades. They're not spending this extra earnings. You've called it a port in the storm. That's from the note that you put out just before you came on the show today. Net interest income up 49%. You charge more to lend than you do on the deposits. That's the result you get, right? Can it hold up is the big question. All of this is not going to hold up. Their guidance was that they might give half of this back you know, after this year. They're assuming deposits flow off. They're assuming lower interest rates. So they're not exactly assuming a super rosy scenario. Um, but yes, I do think the resiliency holds up. Resiliency of funding, resiliency of the business model and the scalability, and certainly the resiliency of the balance sheet. Scott, everyone here is talking about a recession. Their credit losses are half the long-term average. Their guidance for credit card losses, despite everything you've seen, is unchanged. So you look at J.P. Morgan's results and you say, what recession, what crisis, what are you really talking about? Now, J.P. Morgan is best in class global bank, and we will get regional banks next week. Mm -hmm. So let's not get too carried away. But I'll tell you, as far as the largest banks, which have had the most regulation, are the most resilient and J.P. Morgan is best in class out of those. Well, I mean, Diamond, you know, maybe quelled some of the concerns, too, about what's happening on the credit side. On the call, I wouldn't use the word credit crunch if I were you. He said, quote, we're not running around aggressively tightening standards right now. I mean, I just raise the issue of whether they're going to. They just haven't yet. And whether that's going to have an impact and whether you're a little too giddy about these results today as obviously is reflective in the stock of up more than 7%, the biggest earnings pop in some 20 years. It's definitely a concern. I think it's choice of words. Instead of credit crunch, contraction of credit. Say it however you want to. Banking, the banking industry is likely to become more restricted with who they lend to. And you've already seen that. You'll see that in the, uh, the Fed survey when it comes out in May. That shouldn't be much of a surprise. But banks are open for business, and J.P. Morgan, you know, stands atop of that.